Hello, this is Jeremy with Math Boot Camps. Um, earlier this week, I posted this ridiculously huge trig table and I uh, had all the values in it and I said I was going to show you a trick to memorize it. Well, I'm actually going to show you a trick to memorize a piece of it, but the rest of it just kind of falls follows uh, from that. So I'm going to focus on this little piece right here. These angles right here are the common angles, pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3. And I have it in order sine, cosine. When you look at this part of the table, and I literally have this part of the table in my head, I mean, if you ask me what's sine of pi over 3, I think of this table. What's The reason for that is there's this nice pattern that shows up. First of all, all of these are over 2. That's easy enough to remember. Over 2, over 2, over 2. All of them, sine and cosine. And then there's a 1, 2, 3 pattern. You go 1, 2, 3 down, and you go 1, 2, 3 up. And now all you have to remember is everything gets a square root, but the square root of 1 is 1, so I don't have to touch the 1. And I now have all the values for the sine and cosine of the basic angles. Now this, again, you tell me what's cosine of pi over 3, and I'm thinking of this table, and I'm automatically thinking 1 half, just like that. Now what about the rest of the trig functions? Now if you ask me what's tangent of pi over 3, I don't think of tangent, I think of sine and cosine, because tangent is sine of theta over cosine of theta. That allows me to fill in the rest of this table. So tangent's going to be 1 half over square root of 3 over 2. So this would be 1 over the square root of 3, which is the square root of 3 over 3. This is going to be 1 because it's the same thing over the same thing. Uh, and this is going to be square root of 3 over 1, which is the square root of 3. Okay, cosecant. When I hear cosecant, I think 1 over sine. So you don't have to memorize everything, but these identities you need to know anyway, and so they're helpful with this. So this would be 2, this would be root 2, and this would be 2 over the square root of 3, which is actually 2 on the square root of 3 over 3, the more common way it's written down. Okay, secant. When I hear secant, I think cosine. This is 1 over cosine. So when I go over here, this is going to be 2 root 3, over 3 by the same argument as down here. This is going to be root 2, and this is going to be 2. Notice the nice little pattern that comes up here, so if you want to remember it that way, you can. And then cotangent, two ways to think about this. This is either 1 over tangent, which is the same as cosine over sine. Either way. So if I look at it as 1 over tangent, this would be now root 3, this would be 1, and this would be 1 over root 3, which is root 3 over 3. Okay, now what about the rest of this table? Well, again, I focus on sine and cosine, because as you saw, once you know sine and cosine, you know all the rest of them. The way I think about these, I always actually draw this. I use the unit circle, which actually I'm using the unit circle for this part too. But you know what? It's I just didn't draw the unit circle, but here it really helps to draw the unit circle. So if I draw the unit circle... Pretend that's a circle. This point right here, this would be the point 1, 0. This point right here, this would be the point 0, 1. This point would be minus 1, 0. And this point down here would be 0, minus 1. And then all you have to remember is the unit circle actually goes in opposite order of the table. It's cosine, sine. Every point is cosine sine on the unit circle. So okay, so this first point, this would be 0. Cosine is 1, sine is 0. And if you think of the graph of these two, sine starts at 0 and goes up. Cosine starts at 1 and comes down. Okay, here's pi over 2. Pi over 2, okay, that would be 0 and 1. Okay, pi over here on the left-hand side of this unit circle, the x value is minus 1. Remember, x value is a cosine, y value is 0, that's a 0. And then 3 pi over 2, the x value is 0, and the y value is minus 1. From here, I can use these same identities to fill out the rest. Okay, sine over cosine, that'd be 0. 1 over sine, that's undefined, because you can't divide by 0. Secant, 1 over 1 is 1. Cotangent, 1 over 0, that'd be undefined. Okay, come down here to pi over 2. I'm going to keep going. It'd be 1 over 0. Oh, that's undefined. Cosecant, 
1 over sine, that'd be 1 over 1. Secant 1 over cosine, that's problem. And cotangent. Okay, now 1 over undefined doesn't make any sense, so I'm going to think cosine over sine. 0 over 1 is okay. That'd be 0. And so I just continue this process. Sine over cosine, sine over cosine, 1 over sine. etc. Secant is 1 over cosine, so 1 over cosine here would be minus 1. This would be undefined. And then finally, 1 over tangent. 1 over 0 is undefined. 1 over undefined doesn't make sense, but cosine over sine would be 0. And there, I have this entire table. So again, it all started with this piece. This right here. Once you know this, you know the rest of the table. And if you know this right here, the unit circle, eh, that's just that's supposed to be an arrow. If you know the unit circle, then you got the rest up here too. So all you got to do is know sine and cosine and you know all of these values. And again, this is in order, so you can actually write this down. I have students that as soon as they get a test, they just jot down this squared part off the table and they draw this unit circle and they got all the values they need.